Hey guys, what's up? It's Deborah Mito. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a choir-like vocal main melody. So to start off, you got to figure out what your lyrics are going to say. It can just be really, really basic and generic. Just pick, you know, four bars that rhyme. Just figure out kind of how to make the flow sound good. Really, it's pretty simple. Just listen to any song and you can kind of take some inspiration from the lyrics. But just figure out something that kind of sounds decent. It doesn't have to be amazing because the lyrics aren't the main focus of this. So once you've got the lyrics and the melody in your head, you got to record it. For me, I recorded six different layers. You definitely want to record at least like three or four different layers, but the more kind of the better because we want to make this sound really thick and full. That'll just make it sound a whole lot better if you have more layers. Now, when you're recording these layers, you don't just want to sing the exact same thing each time. You want to keep the lyrics the same, but you want to sing it either in different octaves or different harmonies or different tonalities. So as I said, I've got six different layers. This first one right here is kind of a low mid range in my voice. This one is a high mid range. This one is the especially high range. This one is singing the same thing but on the third instead of on the root note. And this is the same thing but on the seventh. So here we've got your different octaves. Here we've got your harmonies. And then here I sang it with a different tonality. So I sang it in my high mid range again, but I belted it more so and it was a lot louder and a bit harsher in my vocal tone. And it's kind of the lead sound of this whole melody. So once you've got your layers recorded, as I said, you want to have at least three or four, anywhere from like five to like nine is going to be kind of the best area to have it, but you definitely want to have at least three or four. So once you've got them all recorded, you can just drop them all into the channel rack, of course, and then put them all into their own mixer channel. And then you want to route them all to one vocal bus. So next we're going to start doing effects. So I'm going to play this melody for you really quickly. And keep in mind, this doesn't have any effects, and it's not leveled, and it sounds pretty terrible at this point. Bless my soul, I know you want it though. You know you got it, ho, oh. counting out my money, ho. Oh. So maybe you can hear, maybe you can't if you have a little bit less of a trained ear, but this is very, very rumbly, especially in the low end, and it doesn't really sound good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each individual layer, and I'm kind of going to solo out the frequencies that it's mainly sitting in. So I'm going to pull up an EQ right here, and I'll do this first one on camera. So we're going to solo this out and open up the EQ. We're going to come to this third little preset right here, and we are going to just bring the low end up until we can really notice a difference, and bring the high end down until we can really notice a difference. Bless my soul, I know you want it though. You know you got it, ho, counting up my money, ho. Bless my soul, I know you want it though. You know you got it, ho, counting up. So you want to pull it in until you can notice a difference and then bring it out just a little bit more. You don't really want to notice a difference on most of these, especially the main ones. Now, on some of the more secondary ones, like the harmonies and stuff, you can cut it down just a little bit more so that you really can notice a difference because you don't want those to be super prominent. You want them to be more in the background. But for the more main layers, you do want to mostly have them sound pretty much the same as they did before you EQ'd them. Now, one thing that you want to be really careful of when you're EQing is that you don't cut out too much high end because what will happen is if there's any S sounds in your melody, it'll make them really, really sharp and really harsh and really prominent. And that's something that we definitely don't want. So I've got kind of an example here. If we've got the high end up here, bless my soul. The S's are pretty bad, but if we bring it down a little bit, bless my soul. I know. Bless my soul. It's way more harsh and in your face and prominent. Now, so you really want to be careful of that because that's not a sound that we want. You can hear it's way more harsh and in your face and more prominent, and that's definitely not something you want because that's not a very good sound and it's going to make your melody sound terrible. So make sure that you don't cut out too much high end from your melodies. Or if you are going to cut out a lot of high end, make sure that you bring it past to that point where the S sounds really bad. So now that we've got each of our layers EQ'd, we're going to level them. So you're going to do this the same way that you would level anything else. Start with the main one, set that at a good decibel level, it doesn't really matter where you put it. Then bring in the next one and put it to where it sounds good in relation to the other one in terms of volume. Continue repeating that for all of the layers that you recorded. So I've leveled out my melody and this is what it sounds like now. Bless my soul, I know you want it though. You know you got it, oh, counting 
not my money ho. So you can hear that sounds way better than before. It just sounds way more even and consistent. Nothing is too overpowering and it just sounds a lot better. So next, getting into more advanced effects, we're gonna start with a de -esser. So the reason that we've got all of these routed onto one track is so that we can do some more broad effects all at once instead of having to do each one individually. So for me, I'm going to use our de from Waves, but you can also just use Maximus if you don't have that or another de -esser. There are also some free alternatives that you can find. I don't personally know of any, but I will show you how to do it with Maximus. So I've got Maximus opened up right here, and we're going to go to the mid band and turn on monitor. Next, you kind of just want to drag this orange area a little under 10 kHz and around 3 to 4 kHz. When you're doing that, make sure that you don't mess too much with the levels of each individual area, as that's really easy to do. Then once you've kind of got it here, you just want to listen and look, and whenever there's an S sound, you want to see where the highest peak is of, across the entire range. Bless my soul. So for me, it is pretty much right about here. So I'm going to solo this out and listen to it. And then maybe bring it up just a little bit. And you can hear that's where a lot of the S sound is. Now, of course, there's going to be some in other ranges, but it's mostly right here. Next, you just want to grab this top dot right here and make sure that you keep it on this line. The easiest way to do that is just go down one, left one, down one, left one. Or if you're feeling brave, you can just do it all at once like this. Now you want to look and whenever there's not an S sound playing, you want to make sure that this dot is about where that's hitting. So for me, it's right about here. It's really low down. And then you just kind of want to grab this middle dot right here and drag it down. And that's kind of going to compress all of those high areas. Now for me, I am just going to use our de -esser because it works a little bit better. But if you don't have it, you can just use Maximus like I just showed you. Now, one thing that you want to be really careful of when you're DSing is that you don't DS it too much or it'll kind of make it sound like you have a lisp. But for me, I'm thinking this is sounding pretty good, maybe about right here. Bless my soul. You can definitely still hear the S, but it's a lot less sharp. Now we're going to do auto-tune. If you're using just FL Studio, you can just use Pitcher. For me, I've got Waves auto-tune, so I'm going to use that. It works a little bit better, and it's a lot easier to use. Now, you might think that you can just do this on the vocal bus, but you can't really because, especially with all the harmonies, it's going to get really confused, and it's just not going to work. So you want to do this for each individual track. So just a very quick tutorial on auto-tune. I'm not very good at this, to be perfectly honest, but I do know a little bit about it. So... I kind of want more of a fake, very auto-tuned effect, so I'm going to leave these all the way up, and I'm just going to turn the correction down a little bit. Now to give it a bit more of a natural sound, I would recommend turning the sense tolerance up to about 20. Some people like to go all the way up to 40. I like anywhere from about 20 to 30, and then turning the time tolerance up to about 2 to 300 milliseconds. But as I said, I do want a very fake sound, so I'm just going to turn these all the way up. Then we've also got the correction knob over here. You can hear at 100%, it sounds like this. Bless my soul, I know you want it though. Right, and that's a little bit too much for me, so I'm gonna bring it down to about 90%. Now I've got each of them auto-tuned, and it sounds like this. Bless my soul, I know you want it though. You know you got it, ho, counting up my money, ho. That sounds really good to me and I'm pretty happy with it. So the next effect that we're going to do is compression. You can just use Fruity Compressor and that's what I used to do, but nowadays I use Arvox. It's just a very, very simple compressor. So essentially what compression does is it just kind of evens out the volume. So sometimes when you're recording anything that includes you know, voice or guitar or drums or literally anything that you're recording, some little areas are going to be a lot lower and some are going to be higher and some are going to be more in the middle. The goal of compression is to kind of bring up the low end, bring down the high end, and I'm not talking in terms of frequencies, I'm talking in terms of volume. You kind of want to bring up the low and bring down the high and bring it all kind of more towards the middle and give it more of an even volume all the way across the audio. Sometimes it's kind of easy to get lied to by compression because it just makes everything sound louder. So you can kind of play with this gain knob over here. Now we've applied compression and that really does deal in dynamics. So you're probably going to want to redo your levels again. So having redone my levels, this is what it sounds like. Bless my soul, I know you want it though. You know you got it, oh, counting up my money, oh. 
that's pretty much all you need to do. So now you can add individual effects that you want to do. This includes vocoders, saturation, more specific EQs, reverb, delays, anything that you really want to do, you, this is the time to do it. For me, I want to add some reverb on the master, and then I want to add a vocoder as well. And this is pretty much our sample, so we can render this out and then you can put it in Fruity Slicer and play with that or play with different effects like halftime or things like that or pitching it all around, whatever. But this is pretty much how you do it and then you can play with individual stuff afterwards. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Please drop a like and subscribe as I'm dropping a free melody kit when I reach 200 subscribers and we're really, really close. Also, go follow me on Instagram. I'm dropping a free MIDI kit when I reach 2,000 followers. And yeah, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all in the next video.